Green grows the holly, though these winter blasts blow now so very high, green grows the holly. What does that mean? What is the holly? What are the blasts of winter? I spoke before of the kind of corruption that has been, and by others can independently be, determined to exist not only in the world and throughout it, and so pervasively as to fully characterize it empirically, de facto, but in its essence and at its root. And as the sinister and most fundamental characteristic of it, de jure. And so that means, in fact, the world's corruption is not some temporary, occasional fact. It is an absolute and fundamental truth of the world and how it operates. Exceptions only prove the rule, and arguing for exceptions has certain very determinable limits to an honest and reasonable person. For example, if it's the case that it is the exception that worlds like this exist, it only demonstrates that the exceptionality is in its evil. But if we say that it is um, possible that there be exceptions, I say yes, but those are going to be small subsets of the totality, and they don't represent the fundamental nature of the world, which is to be fraudulent, to use uh, pretenses of virtue and culture and civility as a pretext and a cover and front for the worst and most fundamentally um, prohibited actions uh, that society understands as wrong. And they themselves are the ones proclaiming the authority to punish as sinister any of those acts if done by anyone else than they approve. So that's their racket. Any exceptions to that are going to be caught in the crossfire between one group of fools and another on a sinking ship that's basically a floating rat's nest. So these overgrown crotch mites that uh, pass themselves off as the normative standard of how to be a human being in terms of daily behavior and the totality of their involvements in fraud and other forms of corruption are quite numerous and swell and teem over the surface of the world, uh, compressing uh, thoroughfares of activity in any city with their noxious odors. And psychotronics being deployed to augment this has only made it, oh, exponentially worse than it would have been 50 years ago. But it's the same noxious odor. It's the kind of odor that someone gives off if they haven't showered and have been very active in the same set of clothing that they've never changed over the duration of a year. And then they put lots of cologne on every day to help hide that and a lot of cologne, cheap cologne, a lot of very bad cheap cologne. And also allows their oral anatomy to rot and then hopes that by taking a swig of Listerine and perhaps also drinking it down as one of their many glorious habits, that that somehow corrects for taking absolutely no care of their teeth, tongue, gums, and um, you know, cleaning themselves on a regular basis there, and thinks that that noxious habit of theirs is going to compensate for that over years and years and years as their teeth rot and fall out from all their heavy meth use, or whatever the hell else they're up to. It's like something like that passing itself off as normal to someone who's experienced normal, okay? except that we're talking about a kind of modification that's augmented by psychotronics, chemical warfare in the air, food, water, and medicine, 
um, weaponized pseudo-economics controlled by a counterfeit racketeering scheme, and a weaponized propaganda platform disguised as your own cultural expression and the most upright of professionals in their activities in every institution. <clears throat> so given that disgusting odor, it's amazing that people haven't noticed that they're paying lip service to everything under the sun that falls under the rubric of righteous is nothing but that tacky, cheap cologne that they douse themselves with year after day in, day out, year after year, though they have never showered or changed their clothing in that entire time. And in fact, have been nowhere near water. Because they're really dried up zombie husks anyway, merely posing as something vital and passionate. May as well be, because if, an, if, a, if a lesser animal, say a pig, and I say lesser provisionally here, I don't want to insult pigs, were to conduct itself according to its own nature, it needn't pay any lip service to, to that. It just simply does. And it doesn't do the contrary of what its nature requires of it as far as how it expresses itself. It's a very true, sincere type of being by, compar by comparison with uh, the... Uh, crotch mice uh, that I spoke of earlier who are well nested in this sinking ship on which teams of fools run about harassing themselves one another and anyone else caught in the crossfire the exceptions to the rule and all basically plunging further into hell and the madness that befits it at an exponentially increasing rate in the modern era but has had a track record of track record of doing this as far back as recorded history goes, and no doubt far before that, by their own admission, in effect. So given that degradation, it would be just fine if it were accelerated by the advent of some cosmic disaster raining down from the heavens like a sort of... Um, karmic reprieve, if you will, uh, poetic justice. That is definitely imminent, uh, because if the exception proves the rule as I say it does, then the most it can do is attempt to sandbag the evil processes just enough to keep the fraud going longer. They're not going to overtake the actual evil mind runs this dimension of matter completely or his minions run what's left of it if he has in fact in any way been destroyed already it will simply decompose down to its smallest part if 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 that won't happen then it'll start from the bottom up it doesn't matter the destruction is inevitable the annihilation of the falsehoods the apocalypse which reveals them for what they are and implodes them on the lack of substance on which they rest is the doom of the entire system. It has no remedy within itself because anyone who would attempt such a thing would be squelched. Any groups would be squelched or they would agitate this greedy, evil, vicious parasite into self-defense mode as its last de desperate effort to preserve itself. It would initiate sequences of destruction in order to augment these mind-controlled mice and convert them in, in the ways that are now augmented in all the ways I have said, but as the old ways have established, like a Pied Piper, to their doom anyway. Certainly to profit themselves as long as possible, just as they have in the past with these rackets, such as contrived wars and civil unrest, which redounds to the benefit of those who control both sides on the top levels or know how to make use of that conflict to their advantage. In other words, the evil-minded. So they're doomed from that perspective. And then if there is not even that much going for them, then their inevitability is, is the same doom, but sooner and more forcefully. Because 
there's nothing holding back their disgusting, wretched vomitus anymore. They'll just basically finish cutting their own throat once and for all, just to end their own misery and feed that inward part of their essence which thrives on suffering anyway, until that's all that's left, that little nucleus. However particulated or totalized, which then disintegrates into oblivion. That's the outcome of the processes that are demonstrated in the world. This doesn't mean anyone should succumb to it and uh, reorder themselves to uh, accept the ugliness and gore that is the consequence of, of these uh, causes, which I've explained here that is, is deduced no matter how they, are, how they are interpreted in their appearance in the world, however the phenomena manifests, it's going to result in the same outcome. But it just says that one shouldn't, if one were honest, pretend to oneself that that means the world's going to be changed fundamentally and turn into a paradise. It, it's not about the world anymore, especially as you are the exception in the few. So it's about you maintaining your spiritual condition in a state that can be fit such a world and, and be fit being a part of it. But you who assume and pretend that this world can be transformed into paradise are kidding yourselves. You're not looking around you and you're not facing reality and you're misleading a lot of people and you're becoming dupes. It's okay to fight the good fight just as if it could up to a point, but if it causes you to treat Honest men is merely cynical. Uh, you know, when, it, when, when a man lies, he murders some part of the world. These are the pale deaths which men miscall their lives. That's what you've done. You have murdered the truth in someone else by becoming the enemy of it, and you've told yourself a lie and done the same to your own soul. It's foolish. I'm not trying to piss on anybody's picnic. But the fact is, an evil storm of demon piss is coming down on your picnic, like it or not. So, uh, you know, it's just the way these things have been arranged, just the way they are. You, you realize that nanotechnology has been deployed that influences the nervous systems of people and can be augmented by hi fi and li fi and scalar interferometric waves and that all this is augmented by the types of soft and heavy metal pollutants along with other chemical pollutants found in the air, food, water, and so-called medicine. Do you realize that these coordinate with this absurd freak show that you call your media and culture so that you become basically meat drones so that's what you're facing in fact no matter how you slice it that's that's the major that's the actual environment and the environmental norm right now in every major city in the world one way or another in order to prop up the powers that hold sway in those local dominions. But all of it feeds into the same process of corruption that ordains the suffering found in this world. That even all those who are religious in their bent, and even moral in most of their conduct, claim that theologically it is the fact that their God ordains it. What's to distinguish their God from some techno crypto-tyrannical jackass with a perverse bent on controlling and manipulating others. Nothing. In fact, even if such a being existed, being evil, he would be dependent upon using matter, in other words, subdomains of his thought, into which are hosted other minds which should have interacted transparently with one another but instead have to deal with the funny house 
mirror assemblage that is the inward workings of this evil mind and uses that matter as the fulcrum to squeeze energy out of those that he's captured in that matter and in those public spaces. Your public fashioner is a fraud and a thief and a liar. 90% or more of you are minions to it and don't even have a clue. You're just traipsing and strutting around like meat puppets. And it's so pathetic that even right now, some geeks in DARPA are godlike compared to you. So what's to distinguish your use of the word in the common and vulgar and modern parlance God, from the content of the idea of some twisted, hunchbacked, skinny, pencil-necked, fucking freak it. Well, I don't want to insult those people. I mean, basically, someone who is ba basically, let's just say even their outward appearance were like that of a Superman. They're still inwardly shit because of the, their positions of power in the world and how they abuse them and abuse you right under your own nose. Which, by the way, is up in the air for no good reason. If you would look at the shit sty you're walking in of corruption that you're so happy about. And, in fact, whenever you're faced with the truth about yourselves, whenever you are dominated by one of your pecking order superiors, you would like to crawl up into your own asshole and disappear most of the time. That's the condition of the world right now, and the exceptions to that rule are in the middle of something like that. The shitstorm of corruption, cowardice, uh, herd-like, swarm-like, mob mentality bullshit of the lowest order, and it's still called civilization. And you're operating in that rubric. So it really almost doesn't matter what you do. In fact, it might, whatever suits your, your conscience, do what your conscience dictates and demands. But you can't say for anyone what that is but yourselves. For me, it demands admitting the truth about this that is fundamentally important, which if you want to call that cynicism, you're making a big mistake. Who in their right mind could not face something for what it is, however bad, if the truth is, is that that's what it is? Who wants to kid himself? At the same time, cynicism isn't sufficient for salvation, of course. It's just that that's your primary focus. Not saving this world, but saving yourselves. Seeing that corruption for what it is, right to the very end, refusing to embrace it or permit it its sway over you. And that's all you're doing anyway. That's all you're doing no matter how effective your actions are in the world. It's not about the consequences of those effects in the world. Remember what you're up against. That is not something that should have been in the first place. Those responsible for that can't just turn a new leaf, flip over and go, oh, whoops. Was that uh, innocence and human dignity and honesty and, and uh, that I had basically shat on for the last several thousand years? My bad. And then, as it's exponentially augmented to occur in the present day through the technological and methodological means that I disclosed, it's like a thousand years of that same evil every year at a certain point. That's your singularity. Orwell's got nothing on this. And given the evil conditions which preceded the manifestation of the technologies and methods that are used now in the so-called glorious evolution of the nervous systems of those engaged in those processes, there was the material precursors to that. 
and it's claimed that that was also ordained by their God. So, it ordained the materials, and then it ordained the methods and techniques of utilizing them to maximize suffering for its own feeding. You want to be in this? So in that context, I'm telling you about the overall structure of the situation. And how from that, and you look at the lay of the land, and you look at the conditions on that battlefield, and it is a battlefield of good against evil, the honest against the dishonest, cowards and insubstantial flakes against the authentic and the courageous. It's a battlefield between them. And you look at the circumstances and how they have, as they have progressed and become more organized, more evil, and draw the appropriate conclusion. It doesn't matter that they could have been different, that all that technology could have been used in another way, that those methods could have been used to safeguard against corruption, but instead are used to augment it, counterintelligence, for example. It doesn't matter that it could have been different. It isn't different. It's the way it is because of the nature and choices of those beings who made them, the agents involved whose scumbag descendants are still running around knocking each other up to this day. and proving their worth at an exponential pace compared to any time before in the history of this invalid existence. They've made a cottage industry out of mocking the reality that they pay the grossest and tackiest lip service to. They're trash. They're literal trash. Gilded trash. And all they want to do is go around robbing people of anything left that there is. So it's just time, attention, energy. Every little thing they can squeeze these cowardly trash. And they've made an economy out of it. A black market economy. That's the overall consequence. Because that's their motive. That was the motive all along, was to build up this clay facade of life into which spirits are trapped, which may then be manipulated, molded, and smashed at the pleasure of those who control that process. Who's yipping, howling, hyena offspring are constantly traipsing and strutting around to inherit it, giddy at the thought that they will inherit that. There isn't a 12-step program for this problem. If there was one, and if it was ever attempted, it was long ago and it clearly failed. So we're at the point now where finally its failure is complete proof of its unworthiness for being in existence. All of its existence, all of its phenomenal manifestation, enduring through time and space and occupying the attention of spirit, is leveraged on fraud. So, all that's going to be done is that is going to be revealed. All the books opened, everything audited down and exposed, and then it has to, the chips have to fall where they are. And if an image is over something that does not support it, and if what supports it is cut off from it, and it from what supports it, fraudulently, because it can't be brought over 
that substance because it was already extracted falsely. And that substance would never accept that because that it doesn't need. It can originate its own manifestations. That is going to disintegrate as it falls into the void because there's nothing to sustain it forever. Not here and there as a shell game to sustain itself. Everywhere. So the world's cut its own throat. So I, I, I salute those who are disgusted at the odious sight. But remember, you're looking at the death of an evil titan. You're not looking at the death of something glorious and good, which is the skin, if you look at it closely, flayed from the actual good. And it no longer has the aura of glory except as what it exudes. in a sort of putrescence that it issues from itself as it tries to dissolve and digest the actually living, true, real beings entrapped within it. That is all that gives it its sheen. And you have to see that in a very deformed perspective and in a very, very custom-tailored light in order to see it as glory. The enlightenment, the renaissance of any era, any golden era was the result of fraudulence, plagiarism conducted against the inventive and good and righteous and Promethean spirit in all its forms so that corruption could benefit from it, the evil could benefit from it, reinstitute it for their own purposes, and then calumniate, slander, and destroy the actual creators of those values. It's all they ever do. And they even then try to dress themselves up as the good, honorable, and righteous. That's the big act, the big facade that's coming down it's going to plunge down like the evening star. Down into and through this twilight. And then straight on into hell and drag everything with it that belongs there. And it'll seed every last one of them, finding their proper place. In a new pecking order. Laugh now, cry and beg later. <laughs>